talk to you about why peacocks are so pretty and warthogs are so very, very ugly. Anybody know who that guy up there is? Darwin. That is Charles Darwin. So this is him as a young man. And this is him as most people recognize him with the beard and all that, because that's about the time he published his book on the origin of species by natural selection. Uh, I think probably most of y'all know about evolution at least a little bit. Evolution occurs slowly over time, generally speaking. Changes are gradual. And uh, we know for a fact that it exists. So when we look at human beings and say chimpanzees or something like that, we see a huge, just a huge difference there. And the same way if we look at horses versus the very first, first most primitive horse, horse excuse me. Um, and it's a little hard. I mean, if I think about how time uh, lasts, for me to think about five years, I can kind of wrap my head around that. How, how, who's the oldest person, little person here? 12, 13? 11. 11, okay. So can you all wrap your head around five years maybe? Can you remember when you were five years younger a little bit? All right. So you probably can't even wrap around your head about being first born, right? Uh, some of us can wrap our hands around 25 years ago or even more. Something like that. If you start talking about 100 years ago, I can vaguely conceptualize that in terms of wrapping my brain around that. But you start talking about the uh, time scale that is an evolutionary time scale, that's just too hard. So we have to look at things like this to help us. So if this is the original ancestor, our little Eohippus, and each of those little black lines is a successive generation, a whole group of them, the population slowly, slowly, slowly uh, changing. If you take a slice here or here or here, you will see different looking animals. And because we have those slices in fossils, we call them a species. And so eventually, you'll get to the final descendant here. That's Is a it, horse! That's a horse. Is that the end? No. Evolution is still occurring. So if we come back in several thousand years, maybe horses will look different. All right. And so if you take that scale and turn it this way, this shows it a little more clearly. The Eohippus, their, their food sources and where they lived, and everything changed slowly over time. And eventually, through slow change, we wound up with horses. That is something that I think all of us can understand. All right? Same thing with whales. Hmm. Evolution has been happening a long time. Humans have seen it. Who here doesn't think that evolution has been seen by humans? Never seen it. We've never seen it. Ooh, I have a great crowd here. We've all seen it. Yeah. These, all these braids. This is artificial selection, of course. Human beings did this. But if you can take a wolf and make that much variation out of it, think about that. That is crazy. We have seen a change in their frequency of various genes over time, and that is evolution. Flu vaccinations. Uh, why do you have to get one every year? Yes. There's a different one. Do you suppose they, where does that different one come from? Anybody have any ideas? It evolved from whatever was in existence last year. Evolution occurs every year, and that's why you have to have a new shot every year. In terms of natural selection, I'm just going over the sort of evolution that everybody already knows about pretty much, I hope. Organisms have lots of different traits. You, have, you can assort them into the different colors. Let's say that the green is better camouflage, so the red and the yellow ones get selected. And so that just leaves the green ones. That changes the population, and over time, they all become green. And there are lots of ways that selection acts on animals. Uh, how well can you find and store food? How well can you forage? How many babies can you have and how quickly? How well can you hide? How well can you put your nest where other predators are, where predators aren't going to be bothering you?
how well can you, can, you, can you disguise yourself so that nothing messes with you because you look like a bad guy? Only that is a wasp. These are all harmless. How well can you defend yourself against threats? Uh, what was I saying about that one? I don't remember. How well can you defend your group against other groups? How well can you warn others that you taste bad? All these things play in. And how well can you disguise yourself? That's a chameleon. It's a, it's a gecko. It's a gecko. Everybody see the gecko? That is totally, this is its tail, gang. Isn't that wild? It even has like nicks out of it like a real leaf. That's insane. So that, that makes sense. Evolution there, it all makes sense, right? You want to see? All right. A peacock. I love peacock. I know, right? It's so pretty. Do you know what this is called? That's called a peacock spider. Can you see why? It looks like a peacock. It does, right? So... What about these things? All of those things look like peacocks. They're all very brightly colored, aren't they? So, what's the advantage in all this? If Darwin would look at this, he would say, uh, what's going on here? This may be a good bluff. It might scare predators. That's true. But, but why so brightly colored? And what about this? Or this? Okay, and why are these um, sage grouse standing around in, at a certain distance from each other. It's all very strange behavior. What's going on here? That doesn't look like a good evolutionary idea. And then here, weapons. Weapons are a good idea, right? You can protect yourself, right? That makes good idea. Why doesn't the female have them, too? Why don't the females have them? Why isn't the male, uh, why isn't the female as big as the male? So the male can protect the female. Why, why, why can't she protect herself? Why doesn't she just evolve to be as big enough to protect herself? Hang on a second. Let me get through all these. And these, these look like a really good idea. But why doesn't she have them? Same thing here. What's that about? That is a fly. And those do doinkies sticking way out there are its eyeballs. Why in the world is that a good idea? How is that possibly a good It certainly could, but then why don't more flies have that? The females, their eyes are far apart too. I mean, that's a good, good guess. I'm not saying it's wrong. But then you look at the other things. The females, their eyes are far apart too, but not as far apart. Well, so like they can see different Yeah, maybe. Maybe it helps them see better. Okay, and, and say, so this, why is this guy so ugly? And this guy's so ugly? I think those are kind of cute. Uh, in a tremendously ugly, scary, giant sort of way. Okay, this is all evolution that is driven by one gender or the other, males or females. So it is called sexual selection. And you might, I'll get to one of my surprises. Is this what you're going to guess? No. Yes? Yes. Watch this one. Okay, evolution by sexual selection. And there are two main ways that you can have sexual selection. You can have it between the same gender. So obviously these guys are fighting each other. These are fighting, these are fighting, fighting, fighting. <clears throat> and uh, lest you think it's only males that do this, in the Hakana and other species, the females fight over territory and males, and they have many mates, the ones that are successful, and they're bigger than the males. It turns everything around. Here we have the sort of sexual selection that is between the male and the female. The female selects the male, in this case, based on his fancy dance. If you ever watch pigeons go boop, 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 and they spin and they puff up and they do all sorts of fancy stuff, do you know that pigeons, not even pigeons, know the difference between male and female among themselves? The only way they know is when the male starts dancing. The male will start dancing, and if it's another male, he'll go, yeah, leave me alone, and peck him and uh, fight him. And if it's a female, they're like, mm hmm. That's the only way they know. They have to start dancing and see. Uh, bright coloration. 
Females prefer brighter colors here, brighter color, bigger claws. And here's another one. A female is going to prefer a male that brings a gift. This spider has very sweetly, it's Valentine's Day tomorrow, y'all, don't forget, remembered to bring his mate a gift, which makes him successful. A dead bug. Sometimes, within a single species, you have both male-male competition, female-female competition, so intraspecific, but you also have interspecific, female and male. So it's really crazy complicated. Like these, the, the stock-headed flies, the males compete among each other and they hold territories. So a territory for one of these flies is a leaf. And they each hold their little territory of leaf and they try to fight for the best leaf, but ultimately it's up to the female to pick which fly she mates with. So the males comp compete, but also the females, they're choosy. Same with these guys. Each male fights for the best territory as he sees it. And then the females come in, look around, see who they like best, and then they mate. Now lions, it might be the case. It's not entirely clear. We all know that male lions fight, right? And they've shown that female lions prefer male lions with dark manes. And there are all sorts of reasons that they think that might be. What I don't get, the question that I want answered there, okay, so she prefers a dark-haired lion. She's not doing any choosing. They're fighting. Whoever fights wins. And how do you know if there is sexual selection going on in a species? Easy. Are the males and females different? The degree to which they are different illustrates the strength of the selection going on. So if you look at, uh, like here, there's some serious selection going on. That's the male of the anglerfish. They're parasitic. They just hang on the female. And they even think Tyrannosaurus rex, the female was bigger. So there's sexual selection going on there somehow. Those are both the same species. Female, gargantuan, male, little bitty. Pretty strong selection going on there because not only is he a different size, he's brightly colored. And since he's a jumping spider, I happen to know that he's going to do a very fancy dance for the female in order to get her favors. This is pretty different, not horribly. So that means that you know the females are choosy and there's also um, male to male combat. Very different, very different. Now if you look at human beings, we have sexual dimorphism but there's some schmear to it. And that's because we're complicated. <laughs> we have preferences, but they're not terribly strong. And so we, we have instances where uh, men are, of course, shorter than women, or uh, women are stronger than men. So we are dimorphic, but not strongly so. So when we look at this, why, why would it, why would, when it comes to selection, or, or excuse me, yeah, evolution, something has to be advantageous, right? How, how is that advantageous? It's pretty. It's pretty. If you have to fly with that, dragging around behind you, is that very adaptive? That doesn't seem like it, no. Can you hide very well? It doesn't seem like it, yeah. No. So scientists want to look at that. And they've looked at it in lots of different species, but I know of one in particular in peacocks. They studied the peacocks, and the peacocks, who the females found to be the prettiest, their chicks had the greatest chance of survival. Actual survival. That's what matters. And here's what they think might be going on there. If you are pretty like that, it means you might have a big giant tail, but you're strong enough to handle getting out of the way. If you have a big giant tail, you have clearly been able to forage and gather enough protein to grow such a lovely thing. You have been able to avoid the sorts of parasites that will damage your tail. You have been able to intimidate other males rather than actually having to fight with them and maintain your pretty tail, and so on and so on. So it is not just a pretty thing. It actually has some sort of um, advantage connected in with it. Do you know 
who first noticed this and, and put forth this theory of evolution by sexual selection? Darwin. He's super famous for the um, natural selection and artificial selection. Everybody knows about that. But he also had a big giant book on sexual selection. This man was brilliant. So the same guy. Are there any questions? No. Yes. Is there a difference because the most of the tiny female black widow eats the I am. Uh, I. I. They often do eat them. Is it because they're in their web? They don't know if it's a spider or a fly, or is it that they just? Here's, here's my best guess, and it's just a guess. If you're going to go into a black, widow, black widow's web, do you want to be big and heavy or small and sneaky? I'm thinking in black widows and other species where uh, the female eats the males, it's kind of an advantage to be smaller. Yeah. And you see that in a lot of insects and a lot of arthropods, spiders and such. I think I am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you.